The second part of Don Quixote of La Mancha, written by Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra, is subtitled The Ingenious Knight and was published in 1615, ten years after the first part. Cervantes changed the word Hidalgo in the title of the first part to Knight, perhaps to differentiate his book from a spurious part two that was published under the name Alonso Fernandez de Aja Veneda in 1614. The book continues the story of the Hidalgo turned knight errant who, after returning from his second outing, has stayed at home under the care of his niece and housekeeper. A month after Don Quixote's return, the priest and the barber speak to him to see if he's regained his sanity. At first they believe he's sane, but when the priest mentions a supposedly imminent attack by the Turks, Don Quixote gives the signs that he's still in the throes of his chivalric delirium. Later, Sancho Panza visits the Hidalgo's house, and they have a conversation alone. Don Quixote asks Sancho what people think of him, and Sancho explains that many people think he's crazy. Sancho also tells him that a young student, Samson Carrasco, mentioned that there's a book circulating that recounts his story called The Ingenious Hidalgo, Don Quixote of La Mancha. Later, Sancho Panza returns to the Hidalgo's house with Samson Carrasco, who talks about how popular the book is. At that moment, Don Quixote tells them that he's decided to go on a third sally. A few days later, Don Quixote and his squire leave for El Toboso. Don Quixote sends Sancho to present himself to Dulcinea, but Sancho, aware that this is an impossible task, decides to convince the Hidalgo that Dulcinea has been turned into a peasant woman as the result of a spell. Don Quixote falls for Sancho's deception and blames his enemies for the spell. Later, Don Quixote and Sancho set off for Zaragoza. A few days later, Don Quixote encounters a knight called the Knight of the Forest, or the Knight of the Mirrors, who says that he's defeated numerous knight errants, including the famous Don Quixote of La Mancha. The Knight of the Forest demands that Don Quixote declare his mistress, Casildea de Vandalia, the most beautiful woman in the world. Don Quixote refuses and, revealing his identity, challenges him to a duel. Don Quixote wins, and when the Knight of the Mirrors takes off his helmet, he discovers that he looks exactly like Samson Carrasco. Don Quixote attributes this observation to a new spell. Nevertheless, a little while later, it's revealed that the student had planned this trick along with the priest and the barber in order to lead the Hidalgo back to his village. Don Quixote and Sancho continue their journey towards Zaragoza, and on the way meet Diego de Miranda, also known as the Green Knight. They travel together for a stretch until they cross paths with a wagon carrying two lions. Don Quixote tries to prove his courage by demanding that the wagon driver open the cages so he can fight the lions. Against his will, the wagon driver opens one of the cages, but the lion yawns and turns his back to the knight errant. As a result, Don Quixote declares himself the victor and gives himself the Knight of the Lions. Later, Don Quixote and Sancho accept Miranda's invitation to go to his house, and they stay there for four days. When they head out again, the knight errant and his squire cross paths with two students who invite them to the wedding of Camacho and Quiteria. In addition, one of the students tells the story of Basilio, who was in love with Quiteria. Basilio shows up during the wedding and pretends to be mortally wounded. In agony, he asks Quiteria to marry him as a form of consolation before dying, and she agrees. Finally, it's discovered that the mortal wound is fake. The newlyweds leave to celebrate, and Don Quixote, Sancho, and the other guests accompany them. Three days later, Don Quixote decides to visit Montesino's cave. 
He goes in alone and spends barely half an hour inside the cave, but he thinks three days have passed. When he returns, Sancho doesn't believe all the things he says happened inside the cave. Among other things, Don Quixote says he saws Montesinos in a sumptuous palace with his friend Durandarte. Don Quixote says Durandarte had died from a spell cast by Merlin. Shortly afterwards, Don Quixote and Sancho meet a beautiful hunter that turns out to be a duchess. She and her husband, who have read the first book about Don Quixote, invite the knight and his squire to stay at their castle. There, they create different made-up situations to amuse themselves with their guests' delusions of chivalry. After one of these setups, in which they make Don Quixote believe that, in order to lift the spell from Dulcinea, Sancho needs to give himself 300 lashes. The Duke gives the squire an island for him to rule. Don Quixote gives advice to Sancho on how to govern. Later, the squire takes possession of his government on what he is told is the island of Barataria. It has approximately 1,000 inhabitants and is located a short distance from the castle. There, Sancho Panza proves to be a just governor. Sancho Panza governs the island for seven days, after which he decides to return with Don Quixote, as he thinks that the post of governor entails too many responsibilities for him. The Hidalgo and his squire leave the Duke's castle shortly afterwards and resume their journey to Zaragoza. On the way, they stay at an inn where the Hidalgo hears two knights talking about the second part of the book, Don Quixote. The Hidalgo skims a few passages from the book and dismisses it. But since in the apocryphal book, the knight errant has an adventure in Zaragoza, he decides to change the course of his journey and head for Barcelona in order to prove that the book is false. One day, Don Quixote encounters a knight who calls himself the Knight of the White Moon and challenges him to a duel. The Hidalgo accepts and is defeated, and he is forced to return to his village and abstain from going on chivalrous adventures for one year. A little while later, it's revealed that the Knight of the White Moon was actually the student, Samson Carrasco, who, with the intention of protecting Don Quixote from his own madness, decided to pretend once more to be a knight errant and challenge the Hidalgo. On his way back to his village at an inn, Don Quixote meets a man named Alvaro Tarfe. The Hidalgo remembers having read that name in the apocryphal book about Don Quixote, and so he decides to talk to him. Alvaro claims to know the other Don Quixote, but after their conversation, concludes that the real Don Quixote is the one he's been talking to. Shortly thereafter, Don Quixote and Sancho Panza arrive at their village, where they are warmly received by the priest and the student. Together they head toward Don Quixote's house, where his niece and housekeeper, as well as Sancho's wife, Teresa Panza, and his daughter, Sanchica, are waiting. Don Quixote talks with the priest and the student, and informs them of his desire to become a shepherd during the year in which he must abstain from being a knight errant. He explains to them that he wishes to entertain himself in the solitude of the countryside and give himself up to thoughts of love. He also invites them to accompany him in his pastoral work. The priest and the student approve of his decision and agree to accompany him as shepherds. Soon after, Don Quixote falls ill, perhaps because of the melancholy that being defeated produces in him. He has a fever for a few days, and during this time, his friends accompany him and try to cheer him up. In addition, the student and Sancho Panza urge him to begin his life as a shepherd. One day, the Hidalgo wakes up and recognizes himself as Alonso Quijano and admits that he was mad before, but that he has regained his sanity. The priest confirms this and, a few days later, the Hidalgo, after dictating his will and saying goodbye to everyone, dies peacefully. <laughs>